the federal government has banned all forms of travel by government officials out of the country as a control measure to contain the coronavirus pandemic. This is by the newly inaugurated Presidential Tax Force, which was inaugurated by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. The committee comprises 12 ministers and seven heads of agencies. Our correspondent, Amadine Uyi, tells us more. The committee membership is comprised of a national coordinator, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, both Ministers of Health, the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Interior, Aviation, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Education, Information and Environment. The timeline for the activities of this task force is six months and it has the following terms of reference that will be open for discussion during this meeting. One is to strengthen the national response strategy, particularly in the areas of testing, containment, and the management of COVID-19. Two, strengthen collaboration with all tiers of government, private sector, faith-based organizations, civil societies, donors, and partners. And three, build awareness among the populace. And four, direct the deployment of any relevant national asset when necessary. Five, lay a foundation for scientific and medical research to address all emerging infectious diseases. And six, advise government on the declaration of national emergency as part of the containment measures when necessary. This is a huge task that calls for diligence, expertise, collaboration, and foresight. We should therefore strive to proffer sol sustainable solutions to the challenges ahead. Let me affirm Mr. President's commitment to supporting this task force and ensuring the safety and well-being of all Nigerians. After extensive deliberations, which lasted almost three hours, the committee came up with its first recommendations. It has become necessary to advise all public officials in the ministries, departments, and agencies, including parastatals, that government has banned all forms of travels out of the country for whatever reason, whether for meetings, bilateral, multilateral, conferences, seminars, workshops, presentations, negotiations, and any form of other ceremonies, uh, this ban will remain in place until further notice and until the situation of the pandemic nature of the coronavirus abates. By this notice, any prior approval to travel abroad on official assignment during this period is accordingly rescinded. With regards to the general public, we want to advise strongly the citizens in their own interests should cancel or postpone all non-essential travel abroad, including business and vacation trips. This is especially so. Joining us now in the studio is the General Manager, Aero Medical Standards, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, Dr. Wilfred Agai. Thank you very much for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you for having me. Now, cases, incidents of coronavirus cases have had connections with passengers who have flown into the country. Now, what would you say are the measures um, put as a defense mechanism at the airport to protect us all as a people, as a nation? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you quite agree that uh, the point of entry, which is the International Airport, is where many travelers will come through from other countries, especially countries that are endemic with the disease. I want to take us back to the historic nature of our preparation, which goes back to as far as 2014. Uh, after the Ebola uh, outbreak of 2014, uh, plans were put in place. We learned lessons, structures were put in place. At the point of entry, we have stakeholders who are the Nigerian Civil Authority, the Port Health Service, which is the competent public health authority at the point of entry, is key in the, in the, in the strategy. 
also the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. The other agencies, the, like the Nigerian Immigration Service and the Customs and other agencies, and the airlines, very importantly. Uh, we came together and formed what we call the Public Health Emergency Management Teams for the different airports, that is Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Paracourt, and Inigo. These are the international airports of concern. These teams uh, went to put a plan together. We call it the Public Health Emergency Contingency Plan that details the roles and responsibilities of each agency. If there's an emergency, we don't want to work at cross processes. We want to work at the same time, knowing what we're doing as a team. So that plan was put together in 2016, and the plan was validated, tested, and also reviewed in 2018. So that is the plan that we had in place. Now, going forward, we look at the, currently screening is ongoing, uh, entry screening for travelers coming from countries uh, outside this country, I mean countries that are, that are endemic with a disease or non-endemic with a disease. The screening is for every passenger that is coming to Nigeria. The primary screening is for us to identify passengers through the forms that they fill. We call it the passenger cell reporting form. Okay. This form gives us the details, the biodata of the person, the passenger, gives us the travel history, gives us the, the the countries he has been to in the last 21 days, and also his address in Nigeria and phone number in case we need to do contact tracing. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you this. I would like you to consider stiffer measures, uh, should in case the situation progresses. Uh, it's an ongoing uh, development, and I can see from today that the uh, President Act Force has issued some uh, very, very stern uh, directives which uh, go a long way. So it will definitely, I mean, things will evolve as time goes on. But uh, let me say that the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, which is the emergency operation center for Nigeria, uh, definitely uh, will do what we call a risk assessment on a daily basis. And that risk assessment will give us the yardsticks and what to do going forward. All right. Now, what, what considerations do we take into account when determining what measures to put in, in place to protect, to protect the nation? Yeah, like I said, uh, the, what is in, under consideration is the risk assessment done by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. Okay. Will give us the yardstick to take going forward. Now, some, have said, some people have said we're not doing enough, that not enough is being done. Like, for example, um, some people that, where people who have had um, automatic, um, imposed automatic self-quarantine. How, how do you react to this? I wouldn't I agree to the fact that we're not doing enough. Okay. Uh, there will be room for, for improvement, I can say, but a lot has been done. Uh, at the federal level, we have seen a tax force put at the presidential level. We have the multi-sectoral interministerial committee that is working. We have also the Nigerian Center for Disease Control that is doing a lot of work to make sure that this country is safe. We have also the, the points of entry that is the airports, we have the Lagos, the state governments, Lagos state government for here, it's working very hard, and doing very well. Other state governments and other, I mean, partners are working. We have the WHO, we have the UNICEF, we have um, MSF, African Union, USCDC, and a lot of uh, local partners working. So a lot of work is ongoing that you may not see, of, of obviously. Okay, there are reports that there's the shortage in testing kits. Uh, however, I'm, I'm interested in our point of entry, in particular now the airports. How, how are we ensuring that the testing process at the airport is efficient and effective to detect these cases? Okay, let me walk you through the testing, the screening that we do at the airport. The screening uh, is done primarily to be able to identify passengers that are coming, get their details, their history of travel, and also to check their temperature. If it's above 38 degrees or 38 or above, they go through what is called a secondary screening, which is to be able to identify and do a case, uh, a case um, study to see, a case definition to see whether they fit into a case definition for further testing. So testing is not done at the airport. It's done at specific laboratories. It's not just at the airport is done. So at the airport, if somebody is, fits the case definition, then the epidemiologist of that state is called upon to transfer the, the passenger to the testing facility. But what could be this identification? Because of recent, we've even found out that some people have been tested positive without even symptoms. So what could be the possible identification to say, you know what, 
this person could be possibly um, positive for, for, for COVID-19? OK, uh, as I said, the case definition is being reviewed uh, as time goes on. Yes. And the case definition will put the travel history, like you see, countries have been added to the countries of interest as time goes on. So if you've traveled to countries of interest or countries with high burden of the disease, you fit into that scenario if you are showing symptoms, uh, particularly if you had contact with uh, a COVID, uh, confirmed COVID case while you travel. Uh, so these are part of the issues that we're looking at. You have yeah. cough, you have difficulty in breathing, you have also um, fever coming from a country that is endemic with a disease. You fit into the criteria for testing. All right, just before I let you go this afternoon, in, in terms of prevention and protection, how would you want to rate us? How well are we doing? We are doing well so far, and I think we can do, do as we go on. The, the, the federal, federal level is coming in now at a very high level. The SGF is giving directives, and I believe with this intervention, a lot more will, will, will be taking place. Dr. Wilfred Agai, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.